Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. Today we're talking about seven car dealership ripoffs that you should never pay. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the seven different ones that are easily avoidable. And I'm also gonna tell you at the end of the video when to negotiate these fees or services, okay? So you've done your research, you found the car that you want, you watched my last video and understand that you went in with your own financing, got the best rate possible, you negotiated your deal and boom, there's a bunch of surprise upsells, products and fees that they're gonna try and sell you in the back office and overall throughout the sales process. So actually, let's start this video with three fees or services that are non-negotiable and they're actually fair for the dealership because I wanna start this video off with good faith and on a good leg. So the first non-negotiable fee is the title and registration, okay? So if you've ever bought in a car before or registered a car before, you know that you have to go through the state to be able to legally drive that car. So state and local governments basically set these prices and the dealerships have no control over these costs. So the dealer collects this money just like a retail transaction would charge you sales tax up front and they do it on the state's behalf. That's kind of what the dealer is doing here. So these are usually referred to TTL, which is tax, title, and license, and will usually cost you around eight to 10% of the total price of the vehicle, okay? So that one's fair. And again, I wanna start this video off on a fair note, but trust me, we'll get into the seven ones that you should never pay for. So number two is the destination charge, okay? So the destination charge is actually mandated to be displayed on all the stickers by the federal government. That's called the Mahoney sticker, AKA, you know, the sticker, if you will. So this basically covers the cost of transporting the new vehicle from the manufacturer or for the port fees if it's being imported from overseas like Germany or Japan, and it's uh, covering that destination charge to the dealer. So this has to be uh, even or the same for that particular model uh, countrywide just because they don't want dealers baking in different costs into the price of the car. So dictated by federal law, this is obviously non-negotiable. Number three, and this is a smaller one that's usually never even negotiated or brought up, but I feel like it's fair to mention, is the inspection fee, okay? So each state has their own safety inspection fee, and this basically means that the dealership has to go through, inspect the vehicle, and it has to pass these uh, inspections, otherwise it's not road legal or sale legal. So these only cost typically seven to 50 bucks, maybe 100 bucks, and it's required by the state, and the prices are set by the state, so again, you can't negotiate this directly. So now that we've given this a fair playing ground, let's get into the seven things that you should never pay for at a car dealership. Ah, yes, number one, my favorite, the dock fee. Okay, so the dock fee, AKA the processing fee, AKA uh, the paperwork fee, AKA, hey, we're just taking care of the girls in the back office so they can make a living fee. That's not the case, okay? These range anywhere from uh, 80, actually can range from zero, but typically what I see is 80 to $795 per dealership. And uh, this can include the DMV and registration fees that I mentioned earlier in this video. So with that being said, a lot of dealerships will take the position of, hey, we can't negotiate on these fees because it's state mandated, it's including your registration and your um, license plate and all that stuff. That's, that is true. However, if you see an exorbitant number and you know for a fact that those things don't cost that much, you need to ask this to be itemized on the bill of sale broken out line by line. So you should only agree to pay the DMV and registration fee portion of those dock fees or processing fees. And if they don't budge, have them lower the price of the car, okay? That's kind of like going to a restaurant and before you sit down, the table gets bust and that busing fee is incorporated into your bill. That's not gonna happen in a million years anywhere, so you shouldn't be paying for it here either. Number two is the delivery fee, okay? So this is different than a destination fee and this is where dealers try and double dip. The delivery fee is separate. It's another profit center for the dealership if they try and sneak this in here. So there's only destination costs that we talked about earlier and that's why I prefaced the video with the non-negotiable stuff so you know what I'm talking about now. 
basically on that Mahoney sticker, when everything is added up, such as MSRP, vehicle options, plus destination charge, that's it. The car only incurs one destination charge ever. So you should never see a delivery fee ever again unless you're buying a brand new car and that should not be broken out as a separate line item again, even if it is a new car, okay? Especially on used cars. There's no such thing as a delivery or destination fee on used cars. So if you see this on a bill of sale, you need to have them remove it immediately or walk away because that's BS. And there's also no such thing and these do not exist on new or used cars unless you're already um, talking about the sticker price for a new car. Okay, let's go to number three, advertising charges, okay? Ad charges are BS, okay? Every business incurs advertising charges. The local restaurant down the street, you know, the cafe down the street, the jewelry shop down the street, everyone needs to advertise in business. It's a cost of doing business. They should not be passing that on to you as the customer. So typically dealers will say, when you see this on your bill of sale, They'll say, we had to pay hosting for our website, we had to pay for our TV ads, we had to pay for a newspaper ad. Yeah, no, no crap, that's the cost of doing business. So most advertising, believe it or not, is actually paid for by the manufacturer depending on how much volume that dealer is doing and what their franchise agreement ultimately is. So if you see this on your bill of sale, have them remove it immediately or walk away. Okay, number four is theft deferral products. Okay, these are hilarious because a lot of the time, well, I don't want to disparage this industry. Uh, theft deferral. So there's some stuff that's legit. You know, there's some GPS tracking devices. There's things like that that can actually help you recover your car. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the stuff like VIN etching or wheel locks. This stuff, it has so much markup in it, it's not even funny. I'm talking hundreds, if not thousands of percent by the dealer. So as I mentioned, you have what we call a VIN etching, okay? So if you've never heard of VIN etching, this is basically where the dealership agrees to literally etch the VIN number of the car, which is the vehicle identification number, into the windshield and also the windows of the car. So they usually charge anywhere from like three to $400 to do this. You can buy a kit literally on Amazon for like $20 or you can even take it to your local sheriff um, or even a local mechanic and they'll do this for either for free or much cheaper. Um, so no thief is gonna check the windows or the windshield if they're gonna steal your car. They're, gonna, they're either gonna bust that uh, windshield, or excuse me, the window, or they're gonna get into the car by bypassing the security and the locks and they're gonna drive off and they're not gonna care. The theory behind VIN etching is that if the thief goes to sell this car later, it's gonna cost them a lot of money to replace each pane or each glass and the windshield, which will ultimately lower the cost or the lower the profit of that theft. So typically the dealership is gonna approach you and um, pitch you with kind of like a money back reimbursement. So if your car gets stolen and we did the VIN etching for you, we'll give you back 2,500 bucks or 3,000 bucks or whatever. So yeah, maybe they paid out one or two of these in the history of the dealership, um, but ultimately this rarely happens if ever, and who knows how much money they've made selling these things. So the second theft deferral I wanna talk about are wheel locks, okay? So wheel locks, you can literally buy these on Amazon again for 20 bucks. It's basically just the lug nuts that go into your wheel. So if you have five lug nuts, four of those will be regular, and the fifth one will be one where you actually need to have a threaded key that fits that pattern in the lug nut to be able to take the wheel off. So that just helps from uh, rim and theft and wheel protection. Uh, so basically, <laughs> I mean, the, they're charging like 200 bucks, 250 bucks for these kits. It's a little lug nut that costs maybe 20 bucks on Amazon. Okay, number five. <laughs> this one's hilarious. The nitrogen fill up, okay? So this is talking about <laughs> This is talking about them filling up your tires with nitrogen, charging like $70 per wheel or like $200 for the set. I mean, this is almost comical, you guys. There's so many fake benefits that talk about, 
oh, you know, this helps your tires last longer and it's less prone to hot and cold temperatures um, because the, the nitrogen doesn't expand as much as uh, oxygen. I mean, this is a load of crap, you guys. The air that we breathe in has about 78% nitrogen in it anyway. Uh, I think I'll be okay with the remaining 22% uh, being oxygen. Uh, so if they take it or if they offer it for free, you know, take it, why not? But at the end of the day, you should not be paying for a uh, nitrogen tire fill up. Okay, number six is ADM, additional dealer markup. So you may not be familiar with this term depending on the type of cars that you buy, um, but this typically happens when you're looking at a more desirable vehicle where supply is higher than demand. And if you haven't checked out my supply and demand video, go check that out right now. But ultimately this happens where, this is 100% profit for the dealership, okay? This is literally 100% profit. Zero over overhead goes into this. They're literally just marking up the price of the car because of the demand. So this typically happens in situations with like, you know, highly desirable models where they're not making a lot of them. So let's call it like the new C8 Corvette, the new Corvette that's coming out for 2020. Uh, Shelby Mustang a couple years back, the Civic Type R a couple years back, uh, rarer Porsches that they don't make many of. So what the dealer will do is they'll typically add on a cost on top of sticker. So not only are you paying sticker, which is stupid to begin with, you're paying above and beyond sticker. And if you pay over sticker, well, you're an idiot, sorry. Uh, so basically, dealers have a network of other dealers that they talk to. If they're you know, a Porsche dealer or an Audi dealer or a Chevy dealer, they can contact these other dealerships and trade them other cars to get that kind of car. So a lot of the time is that supply and demand really is manufactured and artificial. Um, if you really want one of these cars, I mean, talk to one of the managers at the store. They can most likely trade for the car if they don't have it, okay? So don't pay for ADM. And number seven, this is the last one. <laughs> and there's actually multiple uh, items within number seven, but this is for accessories. Okay, and cosmetic upgrades. So this is one of the biggest profit centers of the dealership. So when I worked in selling cars, I also sold accessories and other things such as paint protection, fabric protection, window tint, and detailing. You guys, this is not worth it. There's hundreds of percent of markup built into the price of these things. So the paint protection, that is 100% junk. It will not last for more than a month, I can guarantee you. Um, the stuff that we sold, the guys in the back literally just rubbed it on and washed it off and you know buffed it out and it was gone, okay? So people are paying like five, six, seven hundred dollars for these detailing packages and it's not what they think it is. You can buy these online at like autogeek.com uh, for literally you know, 50, 100 bucks and you can get a true um, polymer coating on your car to where everything just falls off of it, kind of like a duck's back. Um, you know, water literally just beads right off. That's what I use on my own cars. And they'll sell this for like six, 700 bucks. The fabric protection that they sell, that is junk, okay? And you know how I know it's junk? This stuff, if you're using a, a real one, it takes, you know, a few hours to actually set in appropriately and you have to put on a couple of layers. You can buy Scotchgard and the stuff in the can for $9 and do it yourself in literally a day, okay? You don't need to spend $150, $200 for the fabric protection, okay? Um, the window tinting is absolutely overpriced. Support a local business and use someone locally. It'll be cheaper and I can almost guarantee you they'll do a better job. And then detailing. Do not get the detailing at a dealership. So think about it logically, you guys. I detail my own cars and it takes at least three, four hours if I'm doing just a, a one time, one over with the buffer. Um, the dealership detailers, they don't have this much time, okay? They don't have this much disposable time to really, you know, get in every nook and cranny and make sure that everything is buffed out properly. So do not go through detailing services through the dealer. Either support an independent shop or buy a buffer for 100 bucks and do it yourself and have some pride and ownership, okay? So I know I did promise you guys that I'd tell you when to bring this up. So ultimately, negotiation is, you gotta feel it out. It's kinda like talking to a girl at, at the bar, okay? You don't just go up to her and say, hey, my name's Marco, do you wanna get married? You know, that doesn't make any sense. She'd probably call the police, and rightfully so. You have to be smooth, okay? You have to have some sort of building rapport, give and take, it's like a, it's a balance, okay? You give a little, you take a little, then you get to the back office when the bill of sale comes out, and that's when you bring the hammer down, okay? So when you see the bill of sale come out, this is when the um, F&I guy prints off 
eight million pieces of paper and they tell you this is worth this, this is worth this, this is worth this, that's when you can start to negotiate this, negotiate that, negotiate this, okay, I'll pay that. Ultimately, the stuff that they're trying to build into here are pretty much um, one of the biggest profit centers of the dealership. So you need to know when to be able to ask for this stuff off. And at the end of the day, you're the customer. You can just leave, okay? You don't need to buy the car. That's why you never go into a deal where you're absolutely desperate and have to buy something. That way you have no negotiation chips uh, whatsoever. You're kind of desperate in that po at that point. So ultimately, I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Do not buy any of the seven things that I mentioned or at least buy them um, outside of the dealership where the markup isn't so high. And if you want to be a good Samaritan, share this video on social media with one friend. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, have a prosperous day.